So today's session is going to be something a little bit different. It's today's track that you have at Agile India is technical skills, right? DevOps, the, con the continuous culture. How do you actually, well, do the technical side of Agile? One of the things that uh, I'm a bit sad about is I'm now, like, right at this moment in time, there's a talk on Docker. And that's really cool. And so I'm really glad all of you came to my talk. So thank you very much. So the point here, the soft skills in software, what does that mean? Communication. Effective communication. Right? Is it? Oh, there it is. I'll move over this side. All right, so effective communication. What else? It's everything to do with people, right? How do you interact with your peers and your colleagues and your managers? How do you manage your manager? So for the next 90 minutes, we're going to learn a, about six individual different soft skills that you can take and apply. This is going to be a very fast paced. This is going to be a very active session. All right. There are going to be exercises which I will call volunteers from the audience up, and there'll be exercises that everybody will do. Now, this is a very full room, so there's a couple of exercises that I may not be able to do, but we'll see how we go as time progresses. I'm going to talk about three forms of soft skills. Communication, collaboration, and cooperation, uh, the three Cs. Now, communication is probably the one that we all talk about a lot, but we don't do particularly well. Right? So, my first point, communication is concise. Here's a question for you. If I ask you a question, can you answer in seven words? Or are you going to naturally answer in about 20 or 30 or 50 or just keep talking and talking and talking until someone asks you to stop talking and move aside? All right? Think about your daily standard. You've only got a minute to talk. All right? You've got a team of eight, a team of seven. All right? 15 minutes, you've got a minute, two minutes at the max. All right? so, we're going to run a little bit of an exercise. This is something that I do with um, teams that I run. Okay? I want you to convey an idea in seven words. All right? Now, here's the question. This should be familiar with you. You, you should all know this question. What did you do yesterday? All right? Question number one from the daily stand-up. So in your little groups, I want you to take a minute to think. I don't want to hear anyone talking for the next minute. All right, in your groups, just talk amongst yourselves. Count them out. What did you do yesterday? You have seven words. Other people on the table, if they go, count with them. If they go over seven words, shut them down. All right? But here's the trick. I do not want you to convey stats. All right? What did I do? Yesterday, I came to Agile India 2016. Yesterday, I came to Agile India 2016. Beautiful. Six words, seven words. That tells me nothing. Absolutely nothing of value. True? So, what did you do yesterday and convey something of value? I'll give you a couple of minutes to do. Just in your tables. Stuff. <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? <laughs> All right. 
का साइज दस है Thirty seconds. Okay, time's up. All right. Allow me to introduce you to a different, a, a new, before we go further, I'm going to teach you a little tactic, all right, to get a room under control. Don't talk, okay? All you're doing is adding to the noise. If you see me put my hand up, I want you to stop talking and put, put your hand up. If you see anybody with their hand up, stop talking, put your hand up. Within 10 to 15 seconds, the room should be quiet, all right? So that's how we're going to get control. It's a tactic for you to take back. So, can you answer a question in seven words? Ran a great workshop and got drunk. <laughs> that, I feel that. I can understand that. Who here wants to have a go? I watched Afghanistan lose the cricket match. <laughs> Yep, there we go. Who else? Over this one? Yesterday I have attended soft skill session. Same word. <laughs> well, that was today, not yesterday. So, <laughs> okay. All right, so this is the first one. What I want you to do is when you get back to your offices, all right, start seeing if you can convey an idea in your daily stand up in seven words. Let's get the daily stand up from 15 minutes down to three minutes. All right? If you can convey not just raw data information, but an idea in seven words, you're doing really well. Number two, communication is nonverbal. Right? Have a look at this. Oh, sorry, one sec. Can I put some sound on? <coughs> So what I wanted to see is if you could give me a yes or no answer to the question, does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not? Not wittingly. There are cases where they could in inadvertently perhaps uh, collect, but not, not wittingly. All right. Okay, what was that man feeling? <laughs> Shame. <laughs> All right. Could you see that you're yeah, hiding something? Yeah, quite possibly. Eyes were not looking at the person asking the question. All right. Possibly lying, possibly hiding something. All right. This is a general. All right. This is someone who is used to command. All right. If you, <laughs> if you're a general and your body language gives you away, well, how are the rest of us meant to actually work? And what we have to understand is that nonverbal communication is actually something like 58% of the information conveyed during a conversation. Right? Seven, only about 7% are the words that we use. The rest are things like uh, the tone, the inflection. Right? But understand that nonverbal communication is actually so important in how we talk. So when you're sitting there, who here pairs? Pair programming. That's slightly disappointing, all right? <laughs> we are an agile conference, we're meant to be pairing. All right, for those of you who pair, all right, when you're talking, when you're the observer and you're there telling your partner what to do, helping them, guiding them through coding that complex function, all right, understand that whilst their eyes may not be directly on you because they are on the keyboard, all right, they, you're still there in their peripheral vision, right? and they're going to pick up on a lot of those nonverbal cues that you've got. Right? Look at this. Right? This is a nice, happy, smiley face. Right? How many of you who've gone to job interviews? All of you? Lovely. 
How many of you know where to look when an interviewer is asking you questions? How long, okay. So I'm just gonna stand here and I'm gonna talk to you for a couple of minutes. I'm just gonna look you in the eyes. After about 10 to 15 seconds, it gets a little bit awkward. After about 30 seconds, it starts to get really awkward, okay? So in the eyes is the right answer, but it's also not the complete answer because you want to look them in the eyes. You want to have that engagement, but it gets really creaky after a little bit of time, okay? All right, here's a little tactic. Imagine a triangle on their face, okay? And every seven or eight seconds, just move your eyes to another point of the triangle, right? You're still looking at them in the eyes. You're still looking at their face, but your eyes are just ever so slightly moving, and so it breaks up that uncomfortableness that you get when you're just staring someone in the eyes quite lovingly, talking to them about how you're the right candidate for the job. Right? See, he turned his eyes away. All right? I'm looking him in the eyes, and he turned his eyes away. <laughs> all right? That's what happens. All right? So, all right. now the triangle can be big and small. Here's a question. Imagine who you're talking to. All right? Job interview. How are we going to look at them in the job interview? Fairly straightforward? Okay. What if it's your wife or your husband? All right? You're looking at them in the eyes. Is it going to be the same way that you look at an interviewer? I hope not. Okay, so, so uh, like, when you're looking at someone who is close to you, okay, a loved one, a family member, all right, you can stay very tight, right? But when you're and and this is good if you're trying to punish a child or something, right? But if you're looking at someone who is a senior or a colleague, widen the circle, okay, go over their face, right? It's it's a little bit less confronting, right? And if you're in a context where you're trying to, well, get a job, you want the other person to be as comfortable as possible. And looking at them in the eyes is actually not the way to do it. All right? Make sense? Okay. So, final, no, third point of communication. Communication is surprising. The words that come out of your mouth are not what you expect to say, ever. Right? One of the things that we know as individuals is once you say something, you can't take it back, correct? Right? There are cases around the world of people who have been fired for making a joke or just saying something that could be misinterpreted. Right? So understand that communication is critically important and this ability to talk verbally and non-verbally is something that we do very badly. Now I'm going to need volunteers. 10 volunteers from the audience. There's a couple of you who I've preceded. Up you come. All right, two, three, come on. Come on. You can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two more, come on. Nine, beautiful. Okay, so this is a game. <laughs> Never mind. This is a game called presentation karaoke. This is something that you can talk. This is something that you can do in your companies to help people become more comfortable with public speaking, but also to become more comfortable with thinking very quickly. Right? You need to be able to come up with an idea, convey that idea with no preparation. The boss walks up. When is this? Due, uh, how close are you getting finished? You need to be able to answer that question without lying without going, uh, I don't know. Right? You need to be able to have that ability. So, presentation karaoke is a very simple little game. Everyone gets a random topic. Right? And that random topic has random slides. And they have to talk for one minute with no preparation. Are we ready for this? All right, so who's first? All right. Volunteer number one, grab the microphone. <laughs> what did they get themselves in for? I just did a talk, so I'm all over my nervousness, so I'm, I'm okay. Your topic, your favorite movie. Oh, yes. And your slides dun, 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 dun. start, oops. And of course, work if you're doing this. One second, IT. We always hate IT, don't we? My favorite movie is... You're on a 
journey. <coughs> You're on a path, a path leading up a mountain, a mountain that you might crash into if the pilot's not there to steer you away from it. And, and along that journey, you might meet a man with a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, is this projector coming? No, you're next. No, it's one from here, one from there, one from here, one from there. All right, there we go, over that, that side. Okay, your topic is project managers. Whoa! Oh. I can mention that. All right, starting. So project managers are not uh, developers or engineers. They are just people sitting with headphones and just talking and talking and making no sense. Uh, they are most of the time relaxing in, uh, in, 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 during the, uh, in the sea, during this, under the sun. They don't bother about what you're doing, what you're not, and most of the time they're just having their drinks. Uh, maybe sometimes they talk about NBC, WNBT, and it's it's all about games and numbers and score. But but they 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 don't bother what the team thinks, what the team is doing, and eventually the team they think that the team is just a couple of skeletons who can work round the clock all the uh, day and night, working around on the scripts, playing some good music, and, and then thank you very much. <laughs> And your topic is <coughs> planning. All right. So planning. Planning is very, very complicated. It's very difficult. You have to think about all the different variables that are involved. People go down, things go up, costs go down, value goes high, and it's all about the probability. And you can draw nice little pictures when you're planning. You gotta look pretty when you're planning. You gotta smile when you're planning. So this important diagram can show you the value, the impact. And uh, while you're planning, at times you might feel like uh, you are standing on a very low or bad foundation, and you, you need help in planning and make sure that foundation is very stable. But once the planning is done, it feels like a nice breeze on a sailboat <laughs> going through the ocean, right? Everything will be beautiful because we have a plan, and, and we're gonna cross the seas, and, and, and once the product is delivered, it will look so beautiful and flowers will be given to that product, and that's the end of our plan, and it will look amazing, and people will, and we will all be successful. There'll be trust, there'll be partnership, everybody will love us, and, and we will have you. an awesome product. <laughs> All right, your topic. What it takes to be a scrum master. Oh. <laughs> okay, what it takes to be a scrum master. It's not very easy because you have to be really yo and you have to be really, you have to be part of the team. You have to make them feel as if you're part of them. If they are really happy and energetic, you have to be like them. Um, uh, so you have to work with a lot of kind, different kind of people and you'll get scrummed in a lot of stuff, but you have to be uh, uh, smart enough to move around and help people. Uh, so to put another way, you have to be <laughs> you have to be be a very energetic ex ex extrovert person who can. What the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> and you have to work with stuff that you do not know, but you have to act as if you know it. <laughs> And then, and then you have to work with the stupid project managers who come up with stupid <laughs> graphs and they say that everything should be according to the plan. And I feel my team looks like babies and after thank plan. thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, that was good. <laughs> uh, I think I had that one. Your last holiday. <laughs> I, I decided to stop my work. I left my hat back and I said, I want to go and take a risk and take a holiday. It is risky to take holidays when the project is going on, right? Because people are expecting you to be there. But I said, you know what? I've done my, my part. I am angry at this point. Even my phone, I want to break it because <laughs> it's causing me so many calls and I can't sleep and I, I just need a break. So I decided either I quit or I go on holidays. So I decided not to quit because I still like the company, the people, you know. But I said, I, I want to go to holiday. It's going to help me. Uh, it felt like this for a while because I had to cool down, right? And, and I had to prepare then where to go, find a place to go, find some, some, some you know, uh, airplanes to take. And... Um, my name, yes, my name, it is irrelevant because everyone here feels like that, right? <laughs> when you want your holidays, it doesn't matter who you are. And thank you very much. <laughs> I'm hoping her plane didn't have an accident. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> on discovery. Uh, discovery is uh, a difficult process where you might have to discover your wife in the big crowd and she is <laughs> lost. <laughs> and <laughs> that typically happens when you are constantly thinking of some complex business problem and your wife goes for shopping in a mall and you have to go searching for her where the, your kid is searching for you. And, and uh, you sometimes feel like when you discover something, you mostly discover it when you are asleep. Which means that even Kekule discovered the structure of benzene when he was asleep, for a matter of fact. And uh, discovery is all about finding, you know, sometimes when you go for beaches, you can discover some golden, you know, artifacts which you can take, it, take home. And sometimes you might discover some gibberish stuff which you don't even understand, but <laughs> you end up discovering it, so you better, you know, be proud of it, right? And uh, sometimes discovery can be your death angel because you discover some random stuff which kills yourself. Like Mary Curie, <laughs> like Mary Curie killed herself on Thank her you. radium discovery. <laughs> and your topic, agile. Oh, agile. Oh, okay. So agile, yeah, this is what it looks about. Uh, I basically want to do all waterfall implementation, but now I've been pulled in into Agile where I don't know what I have to do, but still get into that. And then I've been shown all these graphs where there's sprint planning, there's all these plannings, and I just don't really care. Yes, men and women are involved into Agile, but that doesn't really matter. There are about, uh, uh, manifesto is too small about Agile, but it is written, uh, you, uh, people can speak about thousands of lines about uh, the manifesto in English, in German, in Deutsch, any language, whatever possible. Scrum Master is where he sits, uh, doesn't really care what he has to do, it's just <laughs> he has to monitor the team saying, okay, do this, do that, and this is his seat. Uh, all our intentions is towards delivering a product, so this is what you have to do, end of the day. And I don't know, where's my next slide? Okay. <laughs> ah, I finished my time? No. Okay. Yeah, this pain, this pain of discipline, this pain of regret, when I implement projects using Agile. So I, I would rather say switch back to Waterfall. <laughs> and on that, we're going to get him off the stage. <laughs> All right, who's next? What did you get yourself in for? On happy marriages. OK. Happy marriages. <laughs> Now marriages are always happy stuff for people uh, who have not got married, but then after we uh, get married, then we realize that as it's preached, it's not that happy. Sometimes we find ourselves lost, uh, even after marriage, that why did we get into this kind of relationship where we have so many rules and we have so many things to abide by. We were better probably uh, uh, bachelor when we were like kittens, where, where, <laughs> where people always used to guide us, this, this is good to do, this is not good to do. But now we have got, uh, now we are always, um, okay, uh, so uh, the creator of your so after you after you're married, you're suddenly the creator of your own destiny. You never know what is uh, going to uh, come your way, but only you will decide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and and sometimes your conditions are like bananas. <laughs> You, you might get you might get peeled off. <laughs> you you can look here, you can look there, but whatever you look like, your ultimate destiny is going to be decided by your wife. So uh, <laughs> so may, you you can look ever wherever you want, but finally it's tactics, strategy, and culture uh, which subtly comes to help to some extent when you can dodge certain things. But at the end of the thing. Uh, uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of the theme, you you certainly need some caffeine kick because at the end of the day, when you need to get motivated in in a married life, you certainly need coffee and some Thank kind you. of help. All right, I have done this one. The software development life cycle. Oh. <laughs> the software development life cycle can be explained in a few easy steps. So first, you have to understand that developing software is really like a big bag of rusty nails. <laughs> and to really go through the process, this first really important step is to put yourself in a box and walk down the street and somehow talk on the cell phone while you're doing that. <laughs> And there's lots and lots of really, really helpful documentation to guide you through the process. This is the process for learning the process, as you can see, through these 53 easy steps. And by following these steps, you will definitely avoid this happening to your project. <laughs> Guaranteed. I, I'll, I'll, I'll commit to that. <laughs> 
The next most important step is to create lots and lots of graphs and charts that nobody understands and more importantly, nobody reads. And then the next thing to do is put them on web pages that nobody go actually goes to. Okay, so um, what is this here? Is this <laughs> it's cricket. Oh, cricket. it's cricket. Okay. So. Wait. Wait. <laughs> it's cricket. It's cricket. All right, thank you. <laughs> Last one. The topic test driven developments. All right. All right, test driven de development. Oh, it's not a kid's job actually. I mean, they never ever think that is so easy. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a combination of circles, circle of influence, uh, and the main thing is the circle of con uh, concern. Uh, circle of control, which you never have when you do TDD. <laughs> All right, so what's your, uh, <laughs> what does that mean? So, okay, so uh, there are a bunch of um, people who don't even know what they're doing when they're doing TDD with no goal at all. And uh, there are uh, instances when people go the wrong way and they have to be told that, you know, that is not the uh, right method and then come back. And th these are instances which are like, uh, you, you learn with the uh, best practices. Uh, TDD is the lifeline of software uh, development. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, you, you all should implement it. Um, Okay, it's, it, it's a combination of so many moving pieces uh, that uh, there's no, there's no um, right answer. And anything can be right or anything can be wrong depending on the... Okay, uh, and sometimes what, coming from the previous slide, sometimes it so happens you have so many options, at uh, uh, times you feel like you're lost and you don't know what needs to be done. And thank you very much. And thanks to everyone. Okay, so. Think about what you just saw. Think about the best of the people up here and the ones who may not have been able to convey an idea. All right? Without naming names, this is everyone was put on the spot, apart from about two people who I pre-warned. Right? What was it about the really, really good ones? What did they have? What did they do? Instant thinking? One time, so they, they, they paused after they spoke. Right? It wasn't just continuous stream of consciousness, there was pauses. Voice modulation, absolutely. Uh, remember, nonverbal communication, tone and inflection is 38 percentage of all communication. Let me just turn this off, I just realized it's still going back here. <laughs> what else? They can correlate, yes? What else? They could make a story, right? absolutely. Right? The, and, and these are the people who, they had an internal thread of that story in their head. The slides were just there to give them a prompt. They were not talking to the slides. Yeah, you know. Energy, absolutely. Right? The ones who are excited, they're, they're there, putting it all out there. Now to go back to Nuresh's talk of a couple of days ago, yes, introverts and extroverts, but even introverts can be very energetic and actually can tell a story very well. So this is something that you can take back to your organization. You can actually run at lunchtime, get a bunch of your teammates together and do a little bit of planning, uh, presentation karaoke. Uh, it's something that is fun. Uh, everyone here had a bit of a laugh. Right? Not everyone was as good as each other, and that's good. Right? People learn. It's about learning how to communicate as effectively and as efficiently as you can. All right. Comments on that one? If we have some time at the end, we'll do a bit more. How about that? Okay. So, last point of communication. Communication isn't all what comes out of your mouth. Communication is also what you write. Now, this is the boring part of the talk. Who here came here expecting to pick up pen and paper? Yeah. Well, ha, sucks for you because I'm about to get you to write something. So. Read this. This is from Aesop's Fables. This was written, oh, that's embarrassing, I forget when Aesop's wrote. It's 4,000 years ago, I think. Right? This is an ancient Greek philosopher, Greek, I think, yeah, right? telling stories that gave morals and ways of working to the world. What does this sound like to you? Why? What else? Hmm? 
escape, avoid, reset, adapt. Yeah? Flexible. Traffic. Come on, seriously, what conference are we in? <laughs> Agile. <laughs> that took way longer than I expected it did. All right? This is Agile 4,000 years ago. All right? Do we agree with that? All right. Here's your next little exercise. You're going to learn to write. Now, understand that writing is mostly just editing. All right? Writing isn't about sitting there and writing word after word after word. It's not like when you wrote essays in um, high school and, your, and, and O levels and A levels. Writing is about putting down a couple of words, an idea, and then iterating over and over again over those words until the message that you want is available and ready. Does that make sense? Now, before you all walk out the door and use the law of two feet, there are going to be more fun exercises after this, okay? So bear with me for about 15 minutes. All right. So, here's the goal. All right. This is going to be a quiet exercise, all right? but we are going to do a little bit of swapping around. We're going to about 50, spend about 15 minutes. I want you to rewrite this story however you want. All right. This is an agile con conference. I want you to rewrite this story so it feels like agile. All right. Make it more explicit. All right. we, we spent Several people not going agile, so let's make agile the first thing you think about when you read this fable. Right? Now, you can if you want, if you don't want to write the whole thing, just write this just rewrite this paragraph if you want. Okay, you don't have to write the whole thing, just this paragraph. If you want to, write the whole thing. What we're gonna do is after five minutes, all right, you're gonna pass it to the person on your left. And everyone's gonna pass theirs to the left, and then you're going to spend another five minutes rewriting or editing theirs, all right? And you're gonna do that one more time, all right? And we're going to build a story that is the best story we think we can build in 15 minutes. We good with that? All right, if you're not at the table, please come and sit at the table. There's a chair there, there's a couple of chairs around the place, so just bring your chairs in, sit at the table. There are pads and paper, all right? Pencils all around, all right? This is a bit of a quiet reflection time. It'll get more noisy in about 15 minutes. Right. Pass it to the left, read that other person's story, and improve it, make it better. That always works. It's an amazing tactic. I recommend you, if you ever have to run a large meeting, perfect. Anyway, uh, my, actually, this is a lie. A friend of mine is an author. He writes fiction books for a living. Right? I gave him the same challenge. Right? And that's his response. Right? And that's pretty amazing. So, who wants to read theirs out? And let me rephrase. The person who edited, who thinks the, the, the one that they edited was great? They were all rubbish. Okay, good. We have one nominee. One nominee. Did you have yours in two words? <laughs> Who else? I, I want three people to read theirs out. No, no, you, you read. Uh, no, you read yours. Yes. You were nominated. Who else? I need two more. Who thinks the ones that they read was really good? Yes, someone said yes. I forget. One more. There we go. His? Perfect, I forget, you've been nominated. <laughs> there we go. Stand up, stand up, stand at the front. The other two come up. Go on. Stand up. Can I read it? Please do. Uh, I cut it short like be adaptable to changes to survive. Be adaptable 
to change this, to yeah. survive? He adapted all to change it to survive. It is a, it's not a traditional story, it doesn't really have a start and middle and end, but it does convey the, the idea. Very good. Okay, we're reading Sean's. Everybody, it's Sean's. This is Sean's. The young oak sapling determined his goal in life would be to touch the clouds. He grew strong, wide, and straight. Whenever he looked up, the clouds had moved, and he would be forced to branch, constantly seeking the direction of the nearest clouds. Held firmly to the earth by his strong, straight roots, he could not reach. Then his seeds fell free, fluttering in the wind, the same wind that carried the clouds. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> All right, I, I resign from all writing. I'm going to give it to you from now. All right, who's the other one? She should read. <laughs> you set the bar high. Well, this was just a, just a, uh, you said just take your take on this. So mm -hmm. um, agility is the skill of staying flexible and be strong at the same time. A bamboo stick, for example, is agile. It grows, it stays flexible, doesn't break easy, and still is green and used for so many reasons, hence valuable. This is what we want from our teams and organizations. And then there are changes here. Very good. So writing isn't hard. It, it, it's, I, I'll be honest, I very, very nearly failed English in high school. Right? And English is a compulsory subject. And Australia, we don't speak anything other than English, so it's kind of hard to fail. So I was a terrible writer. I, I, didn't, I did essays really badly, but I, like, I only scraped through to pass English. Right? And yet, I've written a book. I blog on an almost weekly basis. It's because I had to learn that writing is a critical business skill. It's something that we all need to learn to do, no matter how boring or mundane or frustrating it can feel. Right? But the trick to writing, which I hope you kind of got the idea, is editing. It's not the words, it's the words that come after the words. Right? It's the ability to take an idea and synthesize it. Right? My first book was rewritten at least twice. Right? Every single word in that book has been rewritten. Why? Because it's editing. I'm constantly going back and looking at it. Right? This, this is not the first time we did this. Right? We've done this a couple of times to try and get the right message and the right story in there. Right? So th this is, I suppose, the importance of writing. And, and I, I, know it's, I know this was the boring part of the talk, but I hope you actually got something valuable out of it. Right? Any questions before we move on to the next? No? All right. So we're going to jump ahead. No, there we go. Very, very quickly. Right? This is because I was asked very early on about, can we talk a little bit about culture? Right? And it's true. I want to move away from communication. I want to talk about collaboration now. Because collaboration is what we do when we are agile. Forgetting what Naresh said, <laughs> collaboration is actually very valuable. But you have to understand that in the first instance that there is a cultural aspect to collaboration. And different people and different teams are going to collaborate in different ways. If you haven't heard of it, I strongly recommend you have a read of it concept called Hofstede's Power Distance Index. Right? This was a series of studies and research that's been done over the last 30 years, I think. I'd have to go back to, I, I think, 30 years. And what it does is it maps a whole series of attributes of countries. It's very general. It's very stereotypical. Okay? It's based on survey results. Um, and one of those indices is the distance the perceived distance between a manager and a subordinate. Right? There are other indexes on the masculinity, like how masculine a country is, um, and, and so forth. But this is the one that I really want to talk about, because this is what's relevant to us in an agile setting. Right? We need to collaborate, but we need to understand that India, India has a very high power distance index. Right? India has a very perceives the distance between a manager and their subordinate has been very large. Australia, the United States, we're kind of a bit below 50. Right? 
where we're congenial to our bosses. We'll make jokes with them, all right? We'll insult them to their faces in a friendly sort of way. Israel um, and Austria will insult them in a very nasty kind of way because they really have very little, I don't want to use the word respect, but in those countries, they do not believe that the manager is any way better than them, all right? So it's a, it's a very, very important cultural distance that you need to understand, especially for those of you who are collaborating across countries. All right, this is India, this is an outdoor conference. I would hazard a guess that at least 50 to 60% of you are working in some sort of distributed agile team, or at least there are distributed agile in your company, where you're working with colleagues or customers from the US or Australia or other countries such as that. All right, understand that they will communicate and collaborate in a different way. And this is a good way of just going, how do they interact? Right? You can have a look and there's a references on these slides which you can check and you can, or just Google Hofstetter's Power Distance Index, okay, Dirk Hofstetter, and uh, have a read. Some interesting stats. There's even an, um, there's an app you can download. So if you travel to another country, you can go, well, I'm Australian and I'm in India. Give me all the details about this country. How do I interact with these people? Right? So it's all very stereotypical, obviously, but it's interesting information. So here's a question for you. I'll give you one minute to talk in your teams. What direction does time move? You've got one minute. It moves forward. Any different answer? It moves clockwise. Clockwise forward. East to west. East to west. Hmm? Time does not move. That's a very philosophical perspective that you have. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't have a backward direction. All right. All right. In China, which direction does time move? Down. All right. We use words like going forward, okay, or moving forward to indicate the passage of time. All right. That's that's the English or the Latin root. Right. China, going down. Right. Tomorrow is down one day. Right. Now, interestingly, right, and, and, and uh, I believe this is because their characters, if you read a Chinese book, go down. Same as Japan. Right. So understand that basic concepts that we hold around just language, right? time moves forward, time moves on. It rolls on, right? Not all countries are going to understand that, right? So when we're collaborating, we need to understand that there are distinctions and differences. So let's talk about collaboration. Collaboration needs trust, and trust needs skills. Now, this is going to be very hard because there's way too many of you in the room. Sorry, this is a lot more popular than I thought it was going to be. Um, let me describe you an exercise. We're not going to do it. I want to do it with you, but we're not going to do it because we just literally do not have the space. Okay? Can everyone get from one side of the room to the other safely? All right. Now that sounds fairly simple. The exercise goes as this. You line up. All right. You are given a, oops, let's not stand next to those. You're standing here. All right. You're given, I'm going to stand on the other side of the room. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to stand right here. Okay, so I counted. There are 10 steps. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right? I give you 
15 steps to take. All right? But here's the trick. Not everyone can walk in a straight line. I need you to negotiate with one another to trade steps. All right? So if I need to walk here, okay, it's 10 steps if I'm there, but here it's probably about two, three, four. I've already burnt five steps and I've only got here. All right? So this is a really good exercise that we can run to teach people how to negotiate. It's like, okay, I need two of your steps, otherwise I'm not gonna make it. There are dinosaurs over there, and if I do not get to the other side, those dinosaurs are gonna eat me, all right? And everyone has a goal, a collaborative goal, to get to the other side of the room safely, all right? And then we play it a second time, except this time it's everyone for themselves, except everyone who is wearing red is a helicopter pilot, all right? So if they don't get to the other side, everybody does. The dinosaurs eat them. All right, so this is, this is an exercise that you can play to learn how to negotiate. I really wanted to play it here, but I'm afraid that you will all die. All right, the dinosaurs, there's too many dinosaurs and there's just too, not enough space. All right, so I described the game for you so you understand it's something that you could play in your own time, in your own company. All right, but let's just move on to the next topic, which is also about negotiation. And I'll talk to you a little bit about negotiation. So, oh, first of all, this. This is the reason Agile teams are set at seven plus or minus two, all right? Who here remembers from their high school mathematics the concept of um, order notation? Order one, order n, order n squared, yep? So communication, or more accurately, collaboration, is an order n squared problem, all right? For every individual that you add, you add an exponential number of lines. Right, it'd be the factorial function, okay? But it works out to be an exponential order n squared. So one of the things that we discover is that the bigger a team is, the more paths there are to collaborate, the more difficult it is to actually be successful. And in the previous game that we didn't run, all right, the more people you have, the more people who need to trade we actually find that the percentage who reach the other side of the room safely goes down, right? Because there's w too many lines of coordination and collaboration required. Right? You'll have to take my word for it because you can't practice it. Right? But I just wanted to give you that, ba that background. So let's talk about negotiation, right? So the last part of this talk is to, is to understand why in a business setting we need to negotiate. I don't mean the sales teams. Right? They're negotiating prices all the time. Right? I'm talking about I'm talking about you as developers, right? Because you need to renegotiate for an extra day on that uh, task. You need to get ne negotiate for a pay rise. You need to negotiate with your peer. Right? Which one of you gets to compile now? Right? You need to negotiate all the time in your business. Right now. This is India, you're all negotiating all the time when it comes to buying stuff, all right? I recognize that, so I'm probably teaching stuff you already know, all right? But I'm gonna show you different styles and different tactics of communication, all right? So here is a little competition, all right? Now, no one's actually gonna spend money, all right? But here it is, there are six personality types, roles, which come out when negotiating. Uh, this is very simplistic, obviously, but it suits the purpose of this workshop, all right? Competition. That's the one that is, when you're haggling for that uh, uh, bag or that uh, pair of shoes, competition is what you're doing. It is not win-win. It is you are trying to compete to get the best outcome for yourself. Collaboration is win-win, right? We will negotiate to an optimum outcome for both of us. Avoidance is where you try to avoid any negotiation in the first place. So you will generally settle for a sub-optimum outcome in order to, well, get out. Compromise. So I'm just looking at the time. Uh, yeah, we've got, we've got some time. Um, compromise. Like avoidance, right? But where avoidance is you're trying to get out of uh, the negotiation altogether. Compromise is where you are, you are not, you are willing to settle for something that is equitable, 
but it is maybe not necessarily a full win-win situation. All right? Accommodation, it's like, I'm willing to accommodate how you operate. I'm willing to accommodate your, um, uh, everything that you need in order to gain a successful outcome. And revenge, now that sounds harsh, doesn't it? All right? Who goes into a negotiation seeking revenge? You tell me. Hmm? <laughs> On a divorce, yeah. I, to be honest, I hadn't even considered that. But you're right. Maybe a little less extreme. <laughs> that ends in, monopoly always ends in divorce, so. How about you're haggling with someone who you've haggled with before and they won last time? Okay, they got the better of you. All right, so you're out to basically get revenge in this negotiation. All right, so here's the exercise. You have a thousand rupees, like ten thousand rupees. Okay, we'll make it a thousand rupees to, to split between you. You're going to work in pairs. Okay, if there's more, that it's so in your table, split up into pairs. All right, if there's an odd number, you can do it in three, but you're going to split it between three. But Here's what I want you to do first. Pick a number, one to six. Write it down on a piece of paper. Hidden, secret, all right? That's you. That's how you're going to negotiate, okay? Make sure no one sees it, all right? Hmm? No, no, definitely not your pair, because you're about to negotiate with them. <laughs> yes. Because here's the thing about these different forms of negotiation, or these different personalities, is that it is not two-way. You might be willing to compromise, but they might be out for revenge. Right? You might be willing, looking for a competitive solution, whereas they might be quite accommodating. Okay? So pick a number, one to six. Right? We're going to play this a couple of times. Right? We are going to time box this to five minutes. Right? Now. Here's the thing. Right. Thank you. Um, the basic default goal is to get as much of that money as possible. Okay. Right. If if I had not given you a personality, I would just say your goal is to get as much of that money as possible. Right. Your personality informs how you will negotiate for it. Right? So this is a competition. I want to see who in this room ends up with the most money. Okay? Right? 800, 900. Okay? So let's see how that goes. I'm going to give you five minutes for the first... Huh? 1,000. It's 1,000. Right? You've got five minutes to go. In your pairs. Yeah, you, you, you pick your own personality. Write it down on a piece of paper. Hang on, sorry. Sorry, there's been a little bit of confusion. All right. So I don't, there's been a little bit of confusion, so I just wanted to just make it very clear. All right. You are competing against your pair. All right. They are the person you are trying. You've got a thousand rupees between you. Okay, all right, all right. You got a thousand. All right, one of you is going to walk away with more than the other. All right. The whole purpose of this exercise is to secretly pick a personality. All right. I'm going to be. I'm going to try number five. Write it down on five. Because the other thing we're going to do is we're trying to. At the end of this, we're going to try and guess what the other personality was. Okay. We are going to try and guess how they're negotiating. Does that make sense? Off you go. So you got handles. Works like a treat every time. Okay, so 
So who didn't get an outcome? Some of you, all right, yeah. The negotiation continues, all right. Who here, all right, who here thinks they got the highest? One, two, three, all right, what did you get? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, they did two rounds. <laughs> all right. 1,000, 700, 800. So how did you get 1,000? <laughs> Remind me not to go into business with you. <laughs> okay, or, or maybe do go into business with you, I think. All right, we're gonna do that again. All right, what I want you to, we're gonna change pairs, someone else to negotiate with, and change a number. All right, actually, hang on, sorry, I, I've jumped one step too far. Um, you two, what do you, think, what do you think your partner's personality was, and why? Who's got the microphone? Just talk. Mm-hmm, and you? He's on number four, compromise. He, the right away, uh, the, the moment he starts, he wants to get a compromise, uh, come to a state where we we'll let's share among ourselves. And so, were you right? Yes. Were you won? No, no, we didn't want it. The outcome didn't come. I mean, still, <laughs> the discussion. No, no, I mean, were, were you number one? No, I was number one. And were you number four? Num okay, collaboration. All right, so it's not always easy to pick. So let's go to someone else. Uh, maybe the table behind you. I think my partner is uh, number two. Yes, that's right. Yep, and? and I, I felt uh, he's number one com competing. <laughs> yep, and, and what was the outcome? Uh, huh? Outcome we could not. Uh, we could <laughs> not reach an outcome. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, what about over on this table here? She was two collaboration. She wanted to split it 500-500. Uh, and uh, for sure, she was number one because like <laughs> she wanted to take more of the share. <laughs> and was that correct? Were you what? <laughs> Conclusion. <laughs> okay, so one and two is obviously a very bad combination. <laughs> okay? All right, so let's try something else. All right, we're going to do it again. All right, pick a different number and a different partner to negotiate with. All right, we're trying to get as much money as you can. All right, within the context of your personality. All right, and no more <laughs> sneaky deals. <laughs> Different partners, turn around. A lot of you I'm hearing are getting the full thousand, aren't you? All right, all right. Who here got the full thousand? All right. There's a couple of you. All right. <laughs> Who here didn't get to a um a compromise? That entire table, all right? <laughs> that, 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 that's a rough table, all right? Uh, <laughs> so, who were you and what was your outcome? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Come on. Just loud voice. Uh, worked out something and uh, he gave it. And? Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
Thank you. In the in the second instance, I I chose competition, but then as well the negotiation started happening. I again again became you know either accommodative or uh, compromising. Mm -hmm. So at least what I felt is uh, we start with the character, but if the negotiation is going well and it is reasonable, we start adapting uh, out of you know those behaviors. Is what uh, my personal experience. Okay, so we're going to do a third time, but a little bit differently. Uh, I want two volunteers from the audience. Because <laughs> going to a thousand is funny, but also not real. Okay, when you're ne when you're negotiating, right, what do you do? Uh, you actually, even if you're in compromise or accommodation, right, you're still trying to get a positive outcome, right? So we don't go to zero, okay? So let's do this for real, okay? There's a thousand rupees, right? I want two volunteers, and you will keep it, if, if you can come to an agreement, right? And I'm gonna give you your personality, okay? One, two, all right? Can I get the second mic? I'm only doing this once, by the way. I'm not made of money. Of course. <laughs> He's a friend. <laughs> <laughs> How friendly can you be? Okay. Let me just turn this off so no one can see. Hi. Hey. <laughs> so Hi. Hey. Hi. <laughs> so you um, want to take a call or shall I take a call? Go ahead. Seventy thirty. Dude. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I have a super business deed in my hand. Thirty minutes from now, mm -hmm. I if I get the thousand rupees, I can turn into two two thousand. And from the two thousand, I'll give you five hundred. Tell me. It's a, it's a, it's, it's. If you give me the entire thousand, I'll do that. I can write it down for you, and you will get the profit for it's sure, free. for sure. But if you give me the entire thousand, I can give you more profit. The, 75. the lesser you give me, the lesser profit you get. Eighty. Listen, it's going to be beneficial <laughs> for both of us. You will definitely get it out of this. Missing the twenty percent of the money. Oh my! See, listen. Okay, so how much are you saying? Eighty twenty. Who's 80, who's 20? Me 80 and you 20, okay. <laughs> If I put the 20 in the business, what will you get out of it? Okay, 70, 30. 70, me 30, you okay. 70, 30. I, the business deal is super proposition. I have the person ready with me. Five seconds. So so you say, okay, let's do a 50-50, okay? 55, 50. 50, 50. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 we are deal. Time's up. 50, 50. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay that, I'll pay that. There we go. <laughs> so when the stakes are real, all right, the negotiation goes a bit differently, doesn't it? Right? And, and there's actually a negotiation game I sometimes play, which involves you giving me money, which I much prefer. Um, and it's, it's a fairly standard negotiation game that they, that they play. And I hold up a $10 note. Right? And anyone in the audience can bid for it. Right? If you give me 50 cents, okay, you, I'll give you the $10 note. The only trick is the person with the highest bid and the second highest bid gets the, has to pay me, all right? So what tends to happen, it goes up to $9, $9.50, but then it hits $10, and then it hits $10.50, and $11, because the, people, the, the person who's second is gonna pay me whether or, not they make them, whether or not they get the $10 or not. So it's in their interest to minimize their losses, all right? So it's, it's, I can actually end up with quite a decent pay out of it. All right, so it, it, it's one of those very, I usually then donate it to charity, don't, don't worry. Um, but it's a very interesting negotiating tactic in terms of it actually makes it real, all right? So, was that fun? We had fun? Good. So, that's it. Now, we, let me look at the time. Perfect. Questions? And if I run out of questions, we can do some more presentation karaoke, all right?
Uh, one and two. Who else? Other questions? No, qu it made perfect sense. You guys are all going to be super developers, super, super collaborative, super communicators. Did it make sense? Yes, all the time. All right, how many times have you walked away from a negotiation to go, yeah, I, I, no, sorry, thank you, bye. All right. Of course, they chase after you and then they lower their price again. All right. But at a certain time, absolutely, more than half negotiation. Salary, <laughs> salary negotiation. They are very similar. Um, uh, compromise is trying to get to, to the, like a, you're willing to talk yourself down, right? You're, you're, you're willing to compromise the ideal outcome, right? So, hmm? correct. Yeah. Accommodation is like, like even deeper than that, right? It, it, it's, it's, think about an argument you have with your wife. Right? You're probably in accommodating. Right? You're unlikely to be in compromise. Right? Think about that in terms of the, the, the context. All of them. Like, if, unless you're the same number, right? it's actually very rare to, um, to, to actually meet an, an, an agreement. Right? Collaboration, collaboration, yes. Avoidance, avoidance. Right? It's this one, right? And it's this one and this one, which are going to cause problems no matter what. Right? It, it, it's, it, but that's my point. Right? When you're talking to your boss about your salary, okay, or your peer ab about who gets to compile first, right? uh, or, your, or the project manager about getting an extra day, try and think, what mode are they in? <laughs> All right, your project manager, all right, might be collaborative, all right, might be trying to avoid the whole conversation, all right, probably trying to avoid the conversation, all right, might be willing to compromise, all right, or not at all, all right. Figure out what mode they're in, and that allows you to target your conversation to actually get the outcome that you want. All right, just think about it. you're buying a day on that schedule. This is why I hate projects. with not getting in the first place, you can't win that one. Any other questions? No? Do you want to play some more presentation karaoke? All right. Who wants to, we'll just, if you want to come up, you come up. We've got seven minutes. All right, let me just. Who's, who's first? It's fun. I will point at someone. Yes, you. Up you get. All right. Grab a microphone. Your topic is the last book you read. A messy situation where I cannot, uh, you know, finish the book, or maybe it was kind of very confusing. One in three people. <laughs> oh. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Next one. One. It only takes one minute. <coughs> you. Give it a go. It's fun. Your topic. Scaling agile.
you feel that you know uh, you can uh, you can look there and here and then you will end up uh, in some good place you will try to collaborate everyone it's like uh, you know you are going up to a space in some ship and then you find that you are trying to go somewhere but then it uh, the project doesn't go properly it like it's like a huge uh, uh, image wherein lots of things are there but here and there but you're not able to uh, you know collaborate everyone properly and uh, the slide is not moving yeah so <laughs> you feel like you are a you are a dinosaur and you are you are there are a lot of scrambles spread around here and there and you you don't know wh where you have landed and you try to look out uh, and you try to some serve each other in this methodology and I don't know what I'm talking right now. <laughs> Thank you very much everyone.